Welcome to the first episode of The Science Behind. It's a series dedicated to exploring the underlying science that shapes the way we keep and care for lives in our aquariums, terrariums and reptile enclosures. In this series, we aim to bridge the gap between hobbyist knowledge and scientific understanding. While much of the advice shared within the hobby is based on experience, it's often passed on without explanations, leaving many to follow the best practices without knowing why they work. The science behind is designed to change that. Each episode will focus on one commonly accepted idea or piece of advice and unpack the biology, behavior or chemistry behind it, using clear language, real examples and accessible visuals. Whether you're breeding shrimp, escaping planted tanks or keeping reptiles, understanding the why can lead to more confident, thoughtful and successful care. In the first episode, we'll examine a well-known rule in shrimp keeping. Don't mix different neocaridina colors or you'll get brown shrimp. It's something you've probably heard many creators mention, but often without further explanation. So what actually causes this outcome? In the next few minutes, we'll explore the genetics behind color inheritance in neocaridina shrimp, the concept of wild type expression, and why even two brightly colored parents can produce dull offspring. When we look at Neocaridina shrimp in the hobby today, we see a wide variety of colors. Deep blues, bright reds, yellows, oranges, even greens and translucent shrimp. But if we go back to the origins, these shrimp were never this colorful. The wild form of Neocaridina dividi, often referred to as wild type shrimp, typically displays a translucent or brownish gray coloration. This provides camouflage in their natural habitats where blending in means survival. So how did we end up with shrimp that are bright enough to rival the plants around them? The answer is selective breeding. Over many generations, hobbyists and breeders have identified rare individuals with slightly more intense coloration. Perhaps a shrimp that looked a little redder or slightly bluer than the rest. Those individuals were isolated and bred together. Their offspring was selectively culled, meaning only the shrimp that carried or expressed the strongest coloration were kept for the next generation. Through repetition of this process, sometimes over dozens of generations, color intensity was enhanced and stable color morphs were created. But to understand how this is even possible, we have to look at what gives Neocaridina their color in the first place. The visible color in shrimp is created by pigments, specifically carotenoids, melanin and other compounds stored in specialized cells known as chromatophores. Chromatophores come in different types, each reflecting or absorbing light differently. For example, some reflect red, orange or yellow light, these are known as erythrophores and xanthophores. Others reflect blue or iridescent tones, those are iridophores. And some contains melanin which produces black or brown tones, those are melanophores. The overall color we see on a shrimp's body is the result of how these chromatophores are distributed, how densely they are packed and which pigments they contain. All of this, the number of pigment cells, their location and what types they are, is controlled by genetics. In Neocaridina, coloration is what's known as a polygenic trait. That means it's not determined by just one gene, but by many genes working together. Some genes control how many chromatophores are produced, others control where they appear in the body, and still others influence which pigments are expressed. This complexity is what allows for such a wide range of color possibilities, but it's also what makes color expression in shrimp difficult to predict when breeding. When you selectively breed for a single color, you are slowly reinforcing a particular combination of genes that result in a predictable, vibrant expression. But when you start mixing those combinations, as we'll see in the next section, things become far less predictable. In the first part of this video, we looked at how selective breeding has given rise to the vibrant Neocaridina color morphs we see in the hobby today. But what happens when you mix those colors together, for example a red shrimp and a blue shrimp? The short answer is, you often end up with brown or grey offspring, but the reason why that happens is rooted both in genetics and in the species' natural history. Every color morph of Neocaridina shrimp, whether it's Blue Dream, Bloody Mary, Yellow Neon or any other, ultimately traces back to the wild type form. That wild type shrimp is typically grayish brown and its coloration is driven by a more balanced distribution of melanophores and a lack of dominant pigment expression. Even in today's highly refined color strains, the genetic blueprint for the wild type coloration still exists. 
it doesn't disappear, it's simply suppressed or overridden by selective breeding. When breeders develop a stable color line, they do so by selecting shrimp that express a desired color consistency across generations. Over time, they aim to create what's known as homozygosity, meaning most individuals in the line carry two copies of the same color-related alleles, making the color more genetically stable and predictable. However, when you cross two different color morphs, for example a red shrimp and a blue shrimp, you're mixing two entirely different sets of selectively reinforced traits. These shrimp may carry homozygous traits for their specific colors, but those traits are unlikely to be compatible or even complementary. In most cases, the offspring will not inherit a complete set of instructions for either red or blue, but rather they will receive fragmented or conflicting information. And when neither color gene dominates effectively, the shrimp often revert back to the default expression coded into their shared genome, which is the wild type brown or gray coloration. So in a way, Every neocaridina shrimp is genetically wired to be brown unless specific conditions are met that suppress that default. And when you break apart those carefully selected conditions by mixing different color lines, the natural wild type coloration rises back to the surface. In rare cases, you might get interesting or intermediate colors, especially if there is some shared lineage between the two morphs, but generally without extremely careful and informed breeding, mixing colors results in offspring that are less colorful not more. This is why most serious breeders recommend keeping color lines separate, especially if your goal is to maintain or improve colorations in future generations. In the next section, we'll look at what happens after that mix and whether it's possible to selectively breed those wild type trim back into colorful lines. So once a line has reverted to the wild type coloration, is it then possible to bring the color back? The answer is yes, but it's not simple. Color can be selectively introduced through careful, consistent breeding over multiple generations. This is essentially how every color strain was developed in the first place, by isolating individuals with even subtle hints of a desired color and then reinforcing those traits through selective breeding. So if your tank is full of what are often called mud shrimp, which is the mixed offspring that have reverted to the wild type color, you could in theory start over. By identifying the most promising individuals and breeding them forward, it is possible to slowly create a more vibrant line. But it's a long process, and without focused selection and without regularly removing the shrimp that don't meet your criteria, progress will be slow and inconsistent. This is also why most hobbyists do not attempt to breed back from wild type shrimp. It takes time, discipline and a clear goal, and without those things, the population simply continues to drift towards brown. That's why culling is so important for when breeding for color. It allows you to maintain the purity and predictability of a line and prevent the wild type genes which are still present in every shrimp from resurfacing. For example, I maintain a separate shrimp jar where I keep my culled shrimp, which are the ones that do not quite match the visual standard that I'm breeding for. They're still healthy, active and thriving, they're just not part of the main colony. It's a peaceful, low tech setup and a great way to give those shrimp a place without compromising the breeding goals of the primary line. So, while it is possible to breed color back into the wild type population, in most cases it's more practical to start with a stable, high quality line and then maintain it carefully with proper separation and selective breeding. Now that we understand why mixing neocaridina colors tend to result in brown or wild type offspring, the next logical question is what should you do instead? And the answer depends entirely on your goals. If your primary focus is to maintain a clean, consistent line of a single color, the best approach is to keep only one color morph per tank. This allows you to maintain genetic stability, reduce the chance of wild type traits reappearing, and produce offspring with strong, predictable color. But not everyone is trying to breed for quality or even to sell shrimp. If your goal is more about creating a tank that's vibrant, diverse and visually interesting and you're not concerned with long-term color purity, then setting up a mud tank can be perfectly valid and an enjoyable choice. In these tanks, different colors mix freely and over time you'll likely see a wide variety of shades, including grey or brown, but also occasional surprises. There's no right or wrong approach here, just different outcomes based on what you want from the tank. However, 
If you do choose to breed for color, even casually, it's important to use selective culling to maintain the traits you're aiming for. As I mentioned earlier, I personally use a shrimp jar to house my calls. It's a simple, peaceful setup and it lets me preserve the high integrity of my breeding line without discarding shrimp unnecessarily. In the end, whether you're focused on aesthetics, genetics or just enjoying the experience of keeping shrimp, the key is to choose an approach that aligns with your goals and to understand how your decisions will shape the long-term outcome of your tank. So, when you mix Neocaridina colomorphs, the offspring often revert to brown or wild type shrimp. That's because every shrimp, no matter how colorful, still carries the genetic code for their original grey wild type form. And when the two different color strains are bred together, they may not share the same genes for red or blue, but they do share the gene for wild type. And when those stronger color traits don't align, the genome defaults to what both parents have in common, grey or brown. Whether you're breeding for color purity or simply keeping shrimp for the joy of the hobby, understanding these principles can help you make more informed decisions about your tank. So, have you ever made shrimp colors before? What did you get? I'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, or you're into planted tanks, shrimp, or the science behind aquarium life, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.